I just went outside today, minding my own business, trying to do my business, and I heard a bunch of running back behind me. I turned around. Rooster's trying to get me. Can't be having that. So we got in a little tussle, you might call it. Um, I don't know how well it turned out for him. We'll give him a little salt bath or something like that. I think he might pull through. So usually when I accidentally kill a rooster or a chicken or a guinea or, or whatever it happens to be that day, um, we make chicken and dumplings. So um, my mom died about a year and a few months ago. And, uh, you know, this was one of the best, no, it wasn't one of the, it was the best meal that she ever made. And it was so good. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys how to make today. And just so I can be inclusive, gals, guys and gals. This is to you, Mom. So first you need to, to cook the chicken down. I mean, this guy was... Probably, how old was he? Like a year and a half. Is it? It's been a year. Or did we get him this year? Oh, we got him this year. Yeah. So eight months. He's about eight months old. So I think that's technically considered a boiler. So boiler means that you need to boil them for them to be edible. They're not a fryer. Means that you can fry them up and even like fried chicken, and he won't be too tough. But this guy was definitely a boiler. Um, to cook them down, there's no secret recipe or anything like that, but this is what I use. Like everything that gets cooked in this house has to have onion in it. Get you a food processor, they're nice. Number two ingredient that every recipe in this house has to have in it. It's garlic. We don't have any fresh garlic, so I'm just using this stuff out of the, the uh, little container. But I assure you, it's rough, rough ready. Oof. <laughs> Angie's dying back there. Get you some pepper. Be generous with this. You ain't gonna mess up anything with your pepper. It gives a good taste. And then you get your, your salt. Don't add a whole bunch in there. Um, most of the recipes I do, um, you wait until the end where you have your sauce. And then if you feel like it needs more salt, you add it to taste. You add a little bit more, stir it up, taste it until it tastes good to you. But adding salt helps, helps it cook down. And then stick this guy in his little salt bath and maybe he'll pop out a whole chicken. Um, yeah, just cook this guy down for probably about an hour or two until he's falling off the bone. We're gonna we'll get him out of there and uh, put him on a cutting board and pull all the meat off when he's when he's done. So yeah, but we'll be we'll come back a little bit later and, and check him with a fork. What do you cook him on? Uh, a little over medium heat is good. All right, so like once the uh, once it starts boiling, turn it down low, or it's gonna boil over. Common sense will tell you that, hopefully. Please. All right, the stuff's uh, pretty tender, so let's uh, pull it out and see where we uh... are. Man, that smells really good. Trick. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's done. The best thing to do with the skin is like to pull it all off and put it over to the side. And then uh, you put it in a uh, food processor to kind of grind it up. It'll give your, uh, your, your sauce that you're going to be having your uh, chicken and noodles in. A little bit more flavor. Just don't let your wife know that you're, uh, that's what you're doing with it. All right, I got all the meat pulled off. So you take anything that looks kind of questionable, that people don't want to like actually see and like that they're eating, put it in the food processor. It'll clean it right on up. Got the skin. I assure you that is not uh, tuna. All right, we're gonna do the uh, the broth. Um, it's measured in the recipe is measured in four count paper increments, so you need to measure it out so you know how much you need to multiply or subtract from the recipe. Also, when you're doing like a, a fresh chicken like this, make sure that like no bones fall off in it. Cause like, especially if you got little, little kids and stuff, it's not good to have bones in there. We got just short of eight cups. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the recipe for eight cups. But uh, what I'll post down in the comments below or in the description will be for the four cup recipe and you will be able to do the math. So the recipe calls for six tablespoons of butter but since I have uh, that that is for four cups of broth but I have eight so I'm doing 12 turn the burner on and melt down the butter okay. all right so now that it's that's uh, melted you want to turn up the heat a little bit and what you do is basically you're making gravy you add the flour in very slowly and make sure that you get it all mixed into your fat or shortening which is what we're using as butter slowly mix that stuff in make sure you don't have any lumps see it's starting to foam like that this, this is what you're wanting it to, to do all right now that it's nice and foamy we got it all mixed in good slowly start mixing the broth back in just like we did the flour as you pour it in too fast it'll uh, it separate and it's really hard to get it uh, mixed it all in but if you pour it in slowly you'll be able to get it all mixed in and you'll get some really good gravy on there uh, sticking it up looks like mashed taters Three-fourths cup milk. I'm adding a cup and a half because uh, it's double, of course. And I'm also not using milk. I'm using half and half because half and half just tastes so dang good. Teaspoon of parsley flakes. I'm using Italian, but I'm going a little generous on it because it tastes good. One teaspoon of thyme ground. Add the chicken back in there. Just don't think about what that is. It just tastes really good. Neil's rule of meat. The nastier it looks, the better it tastes. All right, this is the part where I was talking about earlier where you add your salt. Um, get you a spoon. Add the salt in very slowly and taste it every time after you stir it in to see uh, what it tastes like and whatnot. Because salt's very subjective, so uh, just do it to taste. Uh, 
I don't think that needs any salt. All right, the normal meat is back in there, and uh, that just cooks for a little bit. We're going to work on the dumplings now. All right, so we're making chicken and dumplings. Like when you think of chicken and dumplings, what do you think of? Do you think of like big, fat, yummy bread, or do you think like what you get at most restaurants, like little slimy, greasy noodles? We're making dumplings, not the greasy noodles. So here we go. I'm not doubling this part because it's just it, they expand so much. So we're just gonna make a single. I just wanted the gravy to turn out right. Here we go. Uh, Four cups of flour. Half cup of onions. Five teaspoons baking powder. One and a half teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of parsley. Heaping. Dry ingredients, mix them up. Beaten egg. And a cup and a half of milk. I'm going to cheat and take this over to the kitchen aid. Alright, so I've got the dough all mixed up. This is what it looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to take it into small little uh, little balls. We're just going to drop it up on top of the uh, the, the concoction that we made uh, prior. And uh, we'll let it sit there and cook. We're going to cover that up and cook it for about 20 minutes. I think they're about ready. Oh yeah, that is dumplings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is bread. That is dumplings. That is not greasy noodles. This is dumplings. Let me do a taste test and hopefully I don't get popped. Yeah, that's good. All right, we're about to dig into this and we're going to enjoy it. I hope you do too. And uh, I hope you like and subscribe to the, the, our channel. And uh, until next time, say a prayer for my family and we'll say a prayer for yours. Please, will you do it? Please. It'll be really funny. Alright, fine, go away. I'll go get some meat. Why don't I do it? Okay. Alright, so. When I say it didn't turn out too well for him, that's when you climb up and look at it and say, it's going to be alright. But you have, like, the nib look. Like, is he going to be alright? You do that? Is he going to be okay? Is he going to be alright? The chicken's going to be okay. 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 Look at him. Stand over there. <laughs>